We are just getting ready to rack our 25th batch of hard cider, but first, before we rack it, we wanna see what the specific gravity is. So let's go ahead and get our hydrometer in here and take our readings. Looks like this batch is sitting right around 1.006 specific gravity. Now, let's get to racking. With everything sanitized, we're gonna go ahead and get our siphon placed into our jug of cider, get it racked into our new jug. Siphoning tube in. Give it a few pumps to get it started. We're gonna let these carboys sit for the next two weeks or so, let fermentation finish and let these clear up. Then we have a special treat for you guys. We're going to be filtering these using our Boeing Vino filter. Something cool to note here in these, this one is clearly clear. This one has been fermenting a little bit faster. So this is sitting at a 1.007 specific gravity, very close to finishing. This one, which is a little bit cloudier, it's only at 1.020. So it has about a third of the way left to go before it's done fermenting. We'll see you in a few weeks. Now we'll rack batch 25 for one last time. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get that bung out. Far in. We're good. We're good. Woo! We're good, people. We're good. That was close. Also luck. I didn't like that. Ready? Yep. Now we just need to take a final gravity reading of batch 25. I assume it's gonna be right around the same since it has not fermented anymore. And sure enough, it's still at 1.006. Go ahead and taste this real quick. We had plans to add sugar, make sure that's still the case. Yeah, we'll definitely need to add some sugar. It's Pretty plain, pretty dry. It's not as uh, not as sour and tart as we have had with other yeasts. So that's a that's definitely a win. But definitely needs a little bit of uh, sugar or juice flavor. The only major difference between batch twenty four and batch twenty five is the yeast we used. So in our minds, what we're about to do makes sense. Might be a little controversial, but. We're gonna try it. So this is our second time using the Super Jet filter, and this will be the second time we're using it today. We think if we just push about a gallon of water through it, it'll clean it all out and be good to use on our other batch of cider, batch 25. The pads were hovering around five PSI pressure, and we've been told that you can go up to 20 PSI before you need to change out the pads. So ideally, this should work. Wish us luck. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this one gallon of water, we're gonna go through this hose right here, we're gonna go in to the motor, clear out this line, into all the pads here, hopefully clearing out all these pads, out our exhaust, and we're just gonna put this liquid into this drip tray that we have here. From there, we'll move back as long as everything goes okay. We're gonna move this into our cider keg. We'll move this out one into our mini keg. And then any overflow will go into the carboy. So let's do it. We've already tested everything within the last hour. So we know all these clamps are good. All the lines are good. Rachel, if you just wanna hold this one, because it's kind of funky. Yeah, if you just mm -hmm. wanna hold it like that. I've got our out water here. Let's see if this clamp does okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, got it. All right, so ready? Mm -hmm. Let's do it. I got no cider in this line now. I got no cider in this line. We got some coming out still. Yep. Looks clear now. 
Holy crap, yeah, look how clear that is. That looks like water. We got next to no pressure. We're sitting at two pounds. I think probably good, right? Mm -hmm. So now you'll just move that over here and use it in the truck. Yep. So now we'll switch our lines. Let's set this in here for now. We'll get this line into the keg. All right, we'll put this into our cider. Funny note, this is only our second time using these clips. We had them the whole time too. I know. All right. So again, a little bit of water is going to come out when we first turn it on. So as soon as this starts to turn into any color, really. cider or any color. Yeah. So the first time we ended up with over half a gallon and it looked like cider because we didn't realize how clear this liquid was going to turn. So we'll definitely keep an eye out for that. I think we're good, right? Yep. That's it. So we got a 1.75 cannonball keg that we'll fill. Once that's full, we put any excess in the one gallon carboy. And just so you know, everything has been sanitized before we used it. So should be good. Ready? Mm. Let's turn it on. You just watch your thing over here. Yep. Because so, it's already graphic cider. Yep, it's already completely cider now. Look. Completely cider. Do you think that's... Yeah. Yep. No. Pretty close. But look at the foam, you see that Yep. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be hard to put. I don't know why they make that a curve. Because if you're going into another carboy. And the other keg, it worked out really well. We're about half full. This thing works really well. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised at how well. The Bon Vino Super Jet works pretty good. About two thirds. Hurry, you gotta have Oh my gosh. Hey, no one said this wasn't gonna be messy. Yeah, that's still. We still, we're gonna need more than one of these. We're screwed. No, we just will. Are you just going to turn off the pump or take it out? Because we're almost done here. I'll turn off the pump and then... Uh, that's pretty close. There's not much left. It's not I mean, as clear as the other one. Well, the pads are being used. That is not as clear. Definitely. Well, the other thing too is there's a bunch of bubbles. See that? Sure. I think it will clear. It's heavy. Okay, now that we're done with that, we're going to clean this out and just pump a little bit of water through it. So let's get that taken care of. It's weird because the pressure doesn't really seem to go above five. Now that we have an open line on the CO2 tank, we are going to get ready to back sweeten and force carve our mini keg. Let's get to it. This thing has been sitting in the refrigerator, so the first thing we want to do is release pressure if there's any in there. Oh, just a little bit. Very good. Measure out our sugar. We're looking at 150 grams, which is about two grams per ounce. We've taste tested some back sweetening before, and that's how we came up with that two grams per three ounces. So this might start to bubble up as we add the sugar to it. So I'm gonna make sure all of our lines are tight.
perfect. One more pressure release. Good on the pressure. Open her up. Put on our sanitized tray over here. Oh yeah, that looks golden delicious. Now we need to be very careful about how much we add at once because it might start to fizz up. Not bad. We're not gonna worry about stirring it per se because we'll just shake the crap out of the keg. This is actually going pretty good. Maybe we will stir it a little bit. Last time we did this, we dumped all the sugar in at once and we had a huge overflow. All right, let's go ahead and give it a quick stir. Why not? Okay, perfect. Now all we gotta do is seal it up, put it on the CO2. To help with pressurizing it to start and to give it a little bit of mixing since we just added a bunch of sugar, I'm gonna shake it up a bunch here. Then we'll purge it, get rid of any head oxygen we added. Do that a couple more times. Get that hooked up to the CO2 tank. Purge the oxygen. All right, we'll set this in the refrigerator for five days at 15 to 20 pounds per square inch and be good to go. Okay, we're getting ready to bottle this batch. And last time we used the last straw, we had some issues. Uh, there was a lot of foaming and uh, we couldn't really keep the CO2 in there. So to keep CO2 in those bottles, once we purge them, we've added this little rubber bung. So we'll see if that helps out at all. And then also we have the bottles currently chilling in the freezer to see if that'll help prevent some foaming. So let's see what happens. All right, ready? Okay, we're in. So we'll purge. Fighter incoming. It's so slow, I forget. That looks a lot better. Don't wanna that does jinx look, anything, but it looks significantly better. I don't even see much mm -hmm. foaming. Holy crap. It's working. It's slow, but it's working. Nice. Good. I feel pretty good about that. So as expected, we did get 18 bottles out of here. Some of them are a little bit lower than others. However, this was much more successful because I think we were actually capping on foam, which is what we want. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is taste a little bit. And then we've got a little bit more juice left over from this batch that we're gonna back sweeten with more juice. Then we're gonna do this whole process over again. So we'll show you real quick us adding it to the keg and back sweetening it. In the meantime, let's give this a shot. That's good for me. That's definitely a semi-dry. It's pretty good. So for this version of batch 25, we're going to be taking one gallon of hard cider. That's at 6.7% alcohol and blending it and back sweetening it with 0% alcohol, Macintosh apple juice. Then we'll do all the same steps that you just saw.
Might be a little bit more than a gallon, which is a good thing. This one's not super full, so I should be able to get it this one. Other than if it kind of foams up. Oh yeah, I can pour it slow. I almost know my calculations perfectly. Ha! I'm a good eyeball. All right, we'll let this sit in the keg for a few days and force carb. And we'll bottle it. Now we have the best part about making cider, getting to taste test it. This batch is 50% Northern Spy mixed with 50% Macintosh juice that we picked up from our local orchard, King Orchards. If you're curious about the recipe, it'll be down below in the description, or you can see a short video right here of where we created the batch mixing it with Safale yeast. At last, let's crack it open and give it a taste test. Hopefully we have the right amount of carbonation. That's a pretty good fizz. A little bit of apple smell to it. Not a ton though. Not like our last batch. What's nice about force carving, when we give away these bottles to our friends and family, there's no yeast cake in the bottom, so you can drink out of the bottle. Not bad. So the big thing with this is it's more of a semi-dry, closer to dry. Pretty good. It doesn't have a lot of sugar sweetness to it. Not a ton of apple flavor. Not a lot of complexity to it, but that's just because we're using a sweet dessert apple to make this a little bit drier. And also we back sweetened with sugar instead of juice. Overall, it's pretty good. I would definitely drink this because I prefer it a little bit drier. However, uh, moving forward, maybe we'll want to do some sort of apple essence or add some tannins to give it a little bit more of a complex flavor. But I love it, it's pretty good. That's it for today's batch. Just wanna say thank you for watching and tuning in. We've had a lot of successes, in particular with this cider and the last straw. It turned out to be pretty good. The only thing we wanna make sure is we leave it in the keg maybe a few more days so it has a little bit more carbonation, but overall, not too bad. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time. And remember, always follow your dreams.